welcome to church. Well, I shouldn't yeah. say that because you are the church. So welcome to the gathering place where we're going to worship together this morning. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. This is New Life in Christ Jesus Church, and you're welcome here. And if you're watching today live or on the replay, you're welcome to be part of us. We put this, pastors put all this together, all of the streaming services, we're on everything. He's put it all together just to be a blessing to you. So please enjoy, worship, uh, respond, like, love, whatever you want to do. But we believe that we're reaching the world through live streaming through the internet. Amen? So we've got a local congregation, but we've got a worldwide congregation. And we just give the Lord praise and thanks for that in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to gather together, to worship and praise you, to encourage one another, to hear the word of God, to sing and lift our hands and voices to you. And we ask, Lord, for your anointing on our pastor this morning as he delivers the word, on the worship as we lift it up to you, Lord. You said in your word, it's not by might, it's not by spirit, it's not by the cunning words of man's wisdom or fancy songs. But it's by the Spirit. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by the Spirit of the Lord. So, Father, we just yield all of our being, our spirit, our soul, our body, our mind, our stress, all the things that we've been tempted to be overwhelmed about. We just lay them all at the altar. We just lay them aside for a minute. Your word says that we cast all of our care upon Jesus. He cares for us. So, Lord, we just set aside this time to worship you and praise you. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Have your way over the Internet. Let these words and these songs and this time together have an anointing that reaches the hearts of people, Father God. Your word says that it's you that gives the hearing eye. It's you that gives or the hearing ear and the seeing eye. Lord, let a spirit of wisdom and revelation be on your people today in Jesus' name. Whether they're in this room or whether they're somewhere else across this world, let your spirit of wisdom and revelation be upon them. That we might know the hope of your calling and the glorious riches of your inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us, Lord, who are believers. Lord, we thank you for this in Jesus' name. And now we go into your presence and into your throne and we lift you up and we give thanks to the name, the person, of Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to enter into praise and worship. The Bible says that you can do that standing, singing, dancing, shouting, whirling, kneeling, crying, with your hands raised, any way that the Spirit of God moves upon you. It's decent and in order, but that latitude is quite large. So just be, <laughs> feel free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There's song sheets floating around. I tried to put them on chairs where I thought people would be, but there's some more back there on the sound table booth. Thank you. 
open up your heart. Open up your heart and let the Lord flow through you. Open up your heart and let the Spirit of God flow through you. Worship Him. Worship Him. From the bottom of your heart. From the bottom of your heart.
morning to and to come into the house of worship today father we bless your name we bless your name now father i ask you that you will give us the grace lord god give us the grace lord god to to go forth from this day on lord god holy spirit we invite you into this place that you will minister to each of our hearts and to every heart under the sound of my voice holy spirit without you we can't do nothing we look to you and we yield to you and we declare that you are the presence of the living God that's in the earth today to lead us and to guide us into all truth and to show us things to come. So we yield to you, Holy Spirit. And we bless your name. We bless your name. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. And Father, I ask you that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen, I'm a ready writer to write your word upon the heart and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we come with you now that we will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in the glorious and mighty majestic name of Jesus. And all that agree with that said, amen, amen and amen. Well, glory to God. Welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. We believe that we're in the right place today. Amen. At the right time. At the right time. Y'all believe that with me? Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Glory to God. Amen. You know, I believe that God is getting ready to do something. I was going to, I was going to teach on something else today, but the Lord said no. He said, this is what the Lord said. He said no. He said, the people have not understood the significance of of what I've given you. And I said, okay. And I was just sharing it with my wife on the way down here, on the way up to the church today, that God said, I have to continue on the way that, I, that, he, that, he, that he gave me. And, uh, and the power of God came on me so strong when I shared that with my wife. And I said, wow. I wasn't, you know, because see, we, 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 want, we want God's best. 
We want to hear from God. We want to do what God wants us to do. But we have we are blocking God. We are block God is not God is not being hindered by, by, by demons. We're the one that's hindering him. We're the one that's hindering him. Amen. 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 And and this is and this is what God want, want to get us to understand. Amen. Now it could be it could be it could be something that is in our life that is keeping us from the place where we could be heard on high. And I don't know what that place is in your life or in my life, but I know that God said the people are not ready for me to leave this area of teaching yet. I know that for a fact. And so we're going to continue to hear and to do what God has said to do. Amen. What about it? An echo. An echo? Very big echo? Okay, then look over on the screen. All the way down in the corner on the right hand side. On your on your left. On your left. Pull that little arrow down. Give me a second. Oh, I got it. No, it's something that, that you don't know. Line control on the on the right no, side of the keyboard? No, it's this system. Okay. It is this system. Okay. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. So try it now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We, we're getting a new, we're putting up a new system, and uh, we're trying to, we, we're trying to fine-tune it. Amen. Trying to fine-tune it. And that's what the problem is. Is it better now? Can you hear it? Amen. Amen. How about you people online? Can you how's it coming across line right now? Can you can you give me some feedback? You that are with me online right now? How's 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 my voice coming across line right now? Give me some feedback. Amen. Is it still? Okay, well, either way. It's going to be what it is right now. But God has given me a message today, the same message that I've been preaching, and the title of the message is Sin Does What? Separate. Separates us from who? God. From God. Sin separates us from God. Now, before I get into the message today, remember today is the first Sunday, so we will be having communion today. We'll be having communion today. And now, back to what I was just saying, sin separates us from God, and <laughs> Now notice now, when God looks on us, he looks at our descendants also. He looks at our bloodline. He looks at our, our fathers. He looks at our father's fathers. He looks at our father's father's father. He looks at our father's 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 father. <laughs> and go on down to the... 14th generation. Amen. Down to the 14th generation. Now, you remember the stage, you remember the, 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 the phrase that said, you look just like your daddy. Or you look like your mama. You know? You ever heard that phrase before? Yeah. You know what they what they saying? What they're saying? They, they, they said no volume. Okay. Then you come up here for a minute and, 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 and minister or talk or pray for them, and I will get this straight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My working. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now it's working, right? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. God is good. He is faithful. God, we just um, gonna be adjusting some uh, sound system. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, sometimes when something new is going different way, you still, but you, 
you know, whatever God is have some plan and He has some purpose, right? Yeah. And so when we step in, in something new, well, maybe it's kind of a little shaky and maybe it's a little bit, you know, unknowing. But you know what? We keep pressing forward. We keep going yes. forward. We not look what the situation is or what maybe difficulties are. We look at the bigness of our God. We continue to pursue and push him forward. Hallelujah. Because God is on our side. And because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So we're just going to keep going and keep doing and the same thing with you. Yes, you see with some experience, some we will see some things going on, right? But we don't look at that situation. We just, we do our part, right? We do our part. We do our technical part. We do our study. We pursue like some uh, technicians helping us and, you know, but we, we do on our part and the rest of it is to the Lord, right? He's going to be helping us. And the Holy Spirit continue to guide us. The same thing with our lives. Sometimes we can experience difficult shaking, difficult situations, but we keep pursuing. I have a brother who was another uh, last week. I think brother you was sharing something, how he's dealing with some situation in his life. But he don't just turn loose. He just don't throw the towel and Say, well, whatever, whatever. But no, he said, well, I'm going to keep pursuing. I'm going to keep going. Because how many of you know that enemy doesn't want that you succeed? And see, because scripture says, greater is he that is in us. The power of the living God is in us. Lord Jesus is in us. And the Holy Spirit is in us. And the Holy Spirit is the one who will help us to overcome that obstacle. Amen? Amen. So don't turn, don't turn loose and throw away the towel and oh, whatever. Like this brother was, no, he didn't just say no. Whatever they said, I will accept that. No, he keep pro pursuing. See, the faith without works is dead. So if you want to succeed in your life, God has some plan or vision, some adjustments maybe you have to do. Like for that particular brother, he has to do some adjustment on his physical situation. And, and God has given him a, um, instruction what exactly he has to do. It doesn't mean everything going to be like all that perfect because enemy will bring some obstacles. But don't move because of this obstacle. You keep pursuing and says, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you gave me this assignment. And I believe that you will open the doors, that you will remove those who is uh, standing and used by the enemy, who is the obstacles. I will, Father, I thank you, Lord God, the door that you opened for my life in that situation, I will enter in. And that no man or devil in hell will be able to stop it. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. And move, see, the scripture says to speak to the mountains. Yes. It could be in mountains in our life. So, brother, that's a mountain in your life. And you don't speak to that mountain, right? And you speak into the mountain. And you said that mountain, that obstacle, I command you to move in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And, Father, we thank you, Lord God. I pray, Father, for every man and woman and child, those who is here, and those who is watching this broadcast. Maybe you're facing some mountain in your life. Maybe some obstacle in your life. So we're going to stay in agreement right, right now. Because it is says in the Word of God, it is the power in agreement. So we're going to stay in agreement right now with you that that mountain, that obstacle will be moved from your life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So Father, we lift unto you, Lord God, in the Thank name of Lord. Jesus, your people, those who is here, those who is watching this broadcast, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you give some people your assignment. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Some people have experienced some 
mountains and some obstacles. And Father, we take authority in the name of Jesus when we break every demonic assignment that come against to fulfill that assignment, to fulfill that situation that you assign them to do. And Father, we break every demonic forces from the pits of hell that try to stop or block the progress for people to fulfill what you assign them to do. We break that assignment right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we call it in, Lord. We call it in your angels and your protection in the name of Jesus. Let your angels, Lord, release your angels. Let your angels go forward and, and help that individuals, Lord God, to fulfill that assignment. Remove every obstacle in the name of Jesus. We resist every demonic assignment. We command you devils flee in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the breakfast, 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 breakfast in your people's lives. In the name of Jesus, they will be at the testimony that your name, Lord Jesus, will be glorified. We're giving you a praise, Lord. We're giving you a glory, Lord God. You are mighty God. You are God who is more than enough. We thank you, Lord God, that you are God, a supernatural God, that you are God of breakthroughs. You are God of manifestations. And Father, we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We break every demon that's been assigned that come against God's people in the name of Jesus. We break it, break it, break it right now in Jesus' name. We apply the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus over God's people right now. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your blood. We thank you, Lord God, for your protection. We thank you, Lord God, for your direction. We proclaim and declare in the name of Jesus that no weapon against God's people right now should not be prosper in Jesus' name. That your people will walk in a victory Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. The victory for the Lord Jesus Christ. They will not be deceived and they will not be defeated. But the victory comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. We receive that victory right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that your people will walk in divine help. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We break every spirit of infirmity and authority in the name of Jesus. We break every sickness, every disease, every works of Satan that come against the people's bodies. In the name of Jesus, O Shodu Romana, yes, we break every generational curses that come against God's people. We break it, we break it, we break it, we break it. And I thought it's in the name of Jesus. And through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we proclaim that your people will walk in divine help. We thank you, Lord God, for the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ is moved through their body. In the name of Jesus, we command that every spirit of infirmity, we command you, devil, flee in Jesus' name, according to God's word. In the name of Jesus, by your stripes, Lord Jesus, we are healed. We receive this healing. We receive your promises. We thank you, Lord God, because you said in your word that your word will not return void, but will manifest and accomplish in each of our lives. And we thank you for it, Father, that your word will accomplish in each of our lives. And Father, we're giving you a praise. We're giving you a glory. We receive your promises. We thank you for it. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the work of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the work of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we call up in your name. And we ask in you, Lord God, that you search our heart. Lord, that some areas in our life is not maybe pleasing you. Holy Spirit, that you show us this areas in the name of Jesus. Show us, open our eyes of understanding that there will be enlightened, Lord Jesus. If some areas in our hearts is bitterness or unforgiveness, Lord Jesus. We choose to forgive those who ever hurt us. We choose to forgive those who mistreat us. 
We choose to forgive our parents, our grandparents, or those who might afflict our life. Lord Jesus, we choose to forgive and we release into you that individuals because you said in your word, forgive, and we should be forgiven. So, Father, we choose to forgive, and you say from your mouth, maybe some pictures come into your mind right now, into your heart, and, and some individuals even came away from the past. You said from your mouth, and you said, I choose to forgive you. That's my choice. God gave us a choice. And you can choose to carry that evil thing, whatever that person did to you. Or you, you can choose to release it into the Lord. And you can choose to say, I choose to forgive you. Because see, the scripture says, and the word of God will not return void. The word of God says, forgive. See, this is the spiritual principle that it can apply to each of our lives. To forgive. And the word of God says, as we forgive, that will be forgiven. Hallelujah. So Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the presence of the Lord. That the spirit of God is in this place. And we thank you, Lord God, for continually conviction of the Holy Spirit move in this place in such a way like never been before. That you, Holy Spirit, search each of the parts of your people, those who is here and those who is watching this broadcast. Lord Jesus, we call up in your name. And Lord Jesus, you are God of mercy. You are God of, of grace. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you have mercy upon your people. And Lord Jesus, we are asking you, Lord God, for your supernatural healing power will manifest in your people's lives right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, those who struggle, even some voices or some pictures and some hallucinations, Father, let the healing power right now will bring the manifestation of your promises and we command an authority in the name of Jesus we bind every schizoaffective disorder any bipolar disorder we bind it right now in authority in the name of Jesus and we command you devil flee in Jesus name Jesus. and father we thank you Lord God for the healing power Come up and uh, right now, come up and in the name of Jesus, touch, touch in Jesus' name. Healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ, touch you people, Lord Jesus. Those who is here and those who is watching this broadcast, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, that you are the healer. And we're giving you all praise, Lord Jesus. We're giving you all glory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that your people, Lord God, that you, they are new creation in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that the, all things have passed away. They are walking in a newness in the Lord Jesus Christ. They will not look back, but they will look forward of the plan and destiny and the purpose that you have for them. And Father, we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We're giving you a praise. We're giving you a glory. Because you are God who is able to do abundantly above more than we even think or imagine. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We're giving you a praise, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You said in your word, Lord Jesus. That, you are, that we are new creation in Christ Jesus. All of this, all of the things from the past, let them live in the past. But we are new, Lord Jesus, in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Well, God is good. He is faithful God. And sometimes when you go going through some attacks and situation in your life, that's how we talk to the Lord and to sometimes you engage into the in a spiritual warfare right so you acknowledge yourself before the Lord because he already know all about us you know where we come from 
you know where we're going. And so it's not just a one-way thing. And the scripture is talking about to search my heart, O oh God. And you know, this is the should be our daily prayer. Let the Holy Spirit continue to search each of our hearts and lead us in all the truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to try it again. Glory. And so now, as we were saying, God said, the people have not understood the significance of this message as of yet. He said to keep preaching it. I said, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll do that. Amen. Because he's not just concerned about he's not just concerned about uh, this, uh, the sin that's in our life. He's concerned about our eternity. He's, he's concerned about eternity. You see, because if you don't understand the penalty of sin, you not understand what God has provided for you. Jesus came to introduce the kingdom of God. Amen? He, under, he showed you the kingdom of God. He showed how the kingdom of God operate. Then he showed you how to enter into the kingdom of God. How do you enter into the kingdom of God? Do you remember? Through salvation, through repentance. Amen? The kingdom of God, Jesus came and demonstrated it. He came to show you the power. He showed you the significance of walking in the kingdom. But then the way we enter into the kingdom is through repentance. It's through repentance. Amen. Acknowledging our sin. Amen. Glory to God. So now we see right here in, in, uh, in, I, in Isaiah chapter 52, Isaiah chapter 59, I'm going right back to where, we, where we've been, to, back to the, to the old landmark, Isaiah 59. Amen. Now notice he said verse number 1 and 2, Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Amen. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquity, now iniquity could be a generational curse. It could be a generational curse. Amen. And your iniquity, because you see, God look, when God looked at our life, like I said earlier, He looks down, He looked down through the generations. He looked down, He looked down through our bloodline. He sees the, the lifestyle that our forefathers lived. Amen. And the, what they lived, it carried on into their siblings and into their siblings and into their siblings. Now God has given us everything we need to bring this lifestyle into, in, into under control. Amen. And how are we going to do that? By the Spirit of God. Understanding that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Amen. Understand we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Notice, notice this now because he said verse number 2 Isaiah 59 verse number 2 but your iniquity have separated between who? You and your God. Who is your God? Who is your God? Jehovah is your God. Am I right? Yes. And what he said, your sins have separated you between you and your God. What God is saying to us? He's saying to us that you have you, 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 even though you have repented, yet you still indulge in yourself in that sin, which no longer are now just sin. It has become an iniquity. Trust. It become iniquity. It become trespass. It become. It's become. It's become uh, the thing that causes you to be separated from God. Amen. Now, when God is, when, now when I believe that God has given us this message because God wants us to understand that He doesn't want us to be separated from Him. He wants to to draw nigh to Him. He wants to come close to Him. Amen. So, how are we going to draw close to God? We're going to draw close to God through repentance. Through repentance. Amen. Because see, God pronounced a, a sentence over us. Amen. Through 
because of our sin. Because of our sin. Now I'm going to, I'm going to read something here for you. I'm going to read something here. Your sin has separated you from God. You feel you feel alone inside. How many of you know inside you 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 know that you know that life has more to offer than what you're experiencing. And on the inside you feel like, my God, where is God? It, it, I feel like I'm all by myself. I feel like I'm out here all by myself. I'm out, I'm alone out here. And I need help. Amen. I remember the time when I felt that way. I remember the time when when I uh, when I got when I first when I got saved, I felt like I was alone. And, and and you know what I did? Because during that time, right before I got saved, I was a uh, I was doing I was living a life of a, of a sinner like everybody else. Amen. I was doing alcohol. I was doing drugs. I was doing everything like everybody else. Amen. And so when I got saved, I thought all oh, that's supposed to quit. I thought all oh, that's supposed to stop, but it didn't. Why did it not stop? Because my mind has not been renewed to think like Christ think. Amen. And without the renewing of the mind, I'm still going to think the same way. I'm still going to do the same things. I'm still going to act the same way. Why? Because I have not been transformed. I've only been born again. Amen. But now to be transformed, I have to understand what God has made available to me. What has he made He made available to me new life. Right. New life. Yeah. Where did that new life come from? It came through Jesus Christ, through repentance. It came through repentance. Now, he says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new, A new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Amen. God wants us to understand, see, the significance of our repentance. It causes God to, to, to hear our voice when we are praying, when we are seeking his face. But unless we understand that we're going to continue living the same life that we've always lived, uh, 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 what, what, what kind of life, that, what kind of life that, that, that caused you to be separated from God? What kind of life that caused you to, to, to cause God not to hear you? Uh, some you, you you might you might look at your life and you say, "Well, I, I got to stop." You know, it's lust. Lust can stop you from because see you, you you've been delivered from it, but yet still it's in it's in your it's still it's still in your mind because you're not renewing your mind, and because it's still it's still in your mind, and and, and you can't you can't you trying to figure out how to how how to stop it from from happening to you, but but you're not doing anything about it. And y'all understand what I'm saying? You want it to stop, but you're not doing what it takes, what you need to do to make it stop. Yeah. And this is what God is saying. They have not received, they have not understood the significance of sin separates them from God. Hmm. Yeah. You know what you need to do, but you still insist on doing what you want to do, and therefore you have still come to a place where your sins have hidden God's face from you. Fornication. It's something that, that our bodies like, but God said it is sin. Adultery. We like, but God said no. Men going after men. Women going after women. This person that is continuing in these lifestyles that I'm calling out, you will not have no place in heaven. Now I'm just telling what the word of God said. God said, we have not saw the significance of this message. He's going to break it down a little bit more so they can understand what you're talking about. Amen. It don't just apply to you. It applies to every man that stand behind these pulpits. Thank you. Bless every man that stand behind these pulpits, it applies to them too. The wages of sin is death. 
every man in this earth have sinned. Hallelujah. And there's some, there's still men in this earth that are still trying to deal with the lifestyle that they have become accustomed to. We all have sinned. And if you say that you're not sinned, you're lying. I don't care what you're man, woman, boy, girl. If you say you, you're not seeing, you're lying. Amen. You own it. You're just fooling yourself. Amen. But God said, but God said, God said, you have, you, you, you have felt uh, forsaken. And, and, and because you have felt forsaken, you feel like, oh, what is the use? I might just continue on what I'm doing. I, 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 God is not with me. God don't hear me. You're right. God don't hear you. Do you know why he don't hear you? Because you not have sincerely turned your heart toward him. You have not sincerely renounced the sin in your life. You played with it. You're still playing with it. And God said, now they think that I'm playing. Judgment is about to come on them. I didn't say it. I'm just telling you what I'm just telling you what God said. Amen. What God said. The reason why the reason is the reason is we, we we need to look to God is because God is our own way out of this situation. He the one pronounced the death sentence on us. Remember, He said the wages of sin is what yeah. death. Who gave that Who gave that declaration? God did. God did. Woo. They still get mad at the preacher. <laughs> <laughs> you can get mad at the preacher all you want to. Amen. Getting mad at the preacher is not going to solve your problem. Yes, your repentance is going to solve your problem. That's right. Preacher, brother. You can get mad at the preacher. You don't want to you want to come to hear a preacher like me? You don't have to. It's still not going to solve your problem. That's right. Hallelujah. You're preaching real good. Hallelujah. God is looking at our hearts. He's not looking at our clothes. He's not looking at the color of our skin. God is looking at our hearts. And he don't even care what country you're from. Just think about that. He don't care what country you're from. You are created in his image regardless what country you're from. That's right. And the same Principles applied to me, apply to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, you know, I, 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 I like that person right there. You know what? But I, you know what? I, you know, I, I don't know if I should say anything to that person, but you, I can't help it. I got to say something. What if I just did? I gave in to a demonic spirit. I gave in to the prince of darkness. When we give our allegiance to sin, it's just like with switching partners. Switching partners. Amen. God is looking at us and God has given us a way out. God has given us a way out. The Bible tells us, for all have sinned, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Amen. See, that leaves none of us, every one of us, have an obligation. We have to acknowledge what area in our life that we are struggling with. And see, this is one of the things that we don't want to do. We, we struggle in life, but we don't want to talk about the areas that we're struggling in because we don't know who we can confide in. Oh, man, you can preach that. Man. We don't know who we can confide in because we don't want to get it. We don't want to put our, our personal life on the radio. Mm -hmm. You are in the pain, brother. And this is why so many people are still struggling with sin because they don't have no one that they can really talk to to help them to see the, the, the problem is can be dealt with because there's not too much prophecy in the earth today. 
And God is telling you right now, you need to find someone that you can confide because he said, if you confess your, fault, your sin one to another, he tells us to confess our sin one to another. And if we don't find someone we can confess our sins to, then we are going to be held accountable when God has already showed us the way out of that situation, but yet we refuse to do so because we don't know if we can trust that person. I want to let you know, I'm one you can trust. You will not be judged by me if you want to talk to me. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. You will not be judged by me if you want to talk to me. God has given me this privilege through this message because I know that my life has to come in line just like yours. That's right, man. Can y'all understand what I'm saying? And you see, you see, and, and you see, we, none of us have been so righteous that we have not made mistakes. But the thing about it, God is trying to show us the way out. He's trying to show us that we can make it right because eternity is right before us. You don't know the day nor the hour when your time to depart this life. You don't know and that's why God is saying the people have not understood the seriousness of the message that I've given you. And I said, God, what do you want me to do? He said, help them to understand it. Help them to understand it. Amen. So my job is not to just preach this message to you. My job is to help you to understand the seriousness of this message. Amen. Be because... Uh, when God look at us, he look at us, he look at our bloodlines. He just don't see us. He see where we come from. You know, you look just like your daddy. Well, what did your daddy, how did your daddy live? What did your daddy do? Everything that your daddy did, everything because you look like your daddy, that means you're taking your daddy trace. You, you're picking up everything that your daddy did, you, and you're starting to try to act like daddy. See, my daddy was a mechanic. But he was up to a lot of other things too. <laughs> you won't go there today, though. Oh, and so when I grew up, I, 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 want, I learned how to work on my own vehicles. I learned how to change out my own motors in my own car. I learned how to I learned how to overhaul my own motors when I was growing up. I learned how to do the brakes. I learned how to do the, the all that stuff. Amen. Until they start doing all this electronic stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I don't want to touch it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But I learned how to do all that. Why? How did I learn how to do that? Because I, I stood out there and watched my daddy. And he said, hand me this tool. I handed him this tool. I said, what are you going to use? What are you going to do with it? And I asked questions. And he showed me, this is this tool is this, this is the tool to fit this screw. And I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take the head gasket, the head gasket, this uh, valve cover off, and take the head gasket off. And I'm I'm going to change the gases. Amen. And so I learned how to do all that stuff. Why? Because I watched my daddy. If I can learn how to watch my dad and do all that kind of stuff, how much can I learn by watching God? How much can I learn how to walk up right before God by watching him? Allowing his nature, allowing his character, allowing his attributes become a reality in my heart and in my life. Amen. Putting away the sin, putting away lust, putting away in, uh, 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 perversion, putting away uh, 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 what to call that other one? Huh? Selfishness. Oh, yes, yeah, selfishness is one too. Pride, pride, amen, adultery, what, covetousness, pornography, give me another one, 
Fornication. Fornication. What else? Jealousy. Jealousy. Hateful. Hatefulness. Envy. Strife. Bitterness. Unforgiveness. See, all these things hold you in bondage and you don't even see the significance of it and this is why you're still struggling. I see the hand of God right now. I see the hand of God. I see him going down into your bloodline. And I see him taking that which was oh my God. I, he's, he's moving he's moving things out of the way and he's and he's enabling you to see the areas where you need to make corrections in your life and he's giving you the opportunity right now to make those corrections but this is something that you got to do because God's not going to do it for you he's already made he's already gave you every opportunity to make the correction but he's saying to you now you have to make the correction. Except the seed go in the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it'll bring forth what? Much fruit. Much fruit. It's time for you to become, it's time for you to begin to become fruit barriers. See, the power of God is available, but the, but the power of God is not going to manifest until you start to put a demand on his presence through the relationship with him. The power of God is available. I believe I did say that again. But it's not going to manifest until you put a demand on the presence through prayer. This is not a message everybody want to hear. This is why this church is not full. I agree. <laughs> I thank God for you that have come. Amen. But God is giving us. My system went down on me back there. Okay. It's in the devil don't want this message to get out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The devil doesn't want this message to get out. Because he know that when I begin to preach this type of message, he know that it's going to get into the atmosphere and it's going to penetrate hearts. Amen. It's going to penetrate hearts and it's going to cause it's going to cause them to experience deliverance. Because see, the anointing is not going to bring deliverance. It's the power of God that brings deliverance. Amen. You can have God's presence all around you, but until the power begins to rest upon you, that's when you, that's, that, that's the only way you're going to begin to experience the uh, demon cast out, uh, the sick being healed, the, the dead being raised, the, the blind eyes open. Amen. Because the, the anointing is what set the captives free. But the power delivers the captive so they can stay free. The anointing lifts burdens and destroy yoke, but the power shh, causes you to break free from the iniquities and the sin. Are y'all getting this today? Because I'm telling you, God has dealt with my heart about this thing, and I said, God, I, 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 I sincerely wanted to go to something, another area this morning. But last night when I was studying, God said no. God said no. And he might be, he might be saying no because of me too. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just like you. If you're not getting it, that means I might not be getting it. If I'm not getting it, and I can't make sure that you get it. I have to break it down so we all can understand it. Come on now. 
Glory to God, baby. Bring it. Mm. Glory to God. So he says in, in, in Isaiah 59, verse number 1 and 2 again, he said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Verse number 2, your but your iniquity have separated between you and your God. Now get this part. Get this phrase. That he, that, that your sin have caused, has hid, your sin has did what? Has hid his face from you that he will not hear. That he will not hear. When we're praying, it seems like our prayer don't get no more than high to the not even up to the ceiling. Let's own above the ceiling and, and into the spirit realm. Why is it not getting beyond this point? Why? Because because sin have caused God not to hear. Sin has caused God to turn his head. Let me show you again. Right here in the Word. Verse number 2. Your iniquity have separated between you and your God, and your sin have what? Hid his face. Your sin have hid his face. He's turned his back. He's turned his face away from you. Away from me. And away from everyone that committing sin. And when we pray... The only prayer God wants to hear is that, Father, I repent of my sin. This is, this is the only thing that's going to get God's attention. God, I repent of my sin. Father, please forgive me. I know that I did wrong when I looked at this person. I knew I did wrong when I, when I covered this, 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 this thing. I know I did wrong when, when I looked at this stuff on the internet. God, I don't know how to stop. Let me tell you how to stop. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, no, no, it's, 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 Is that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Because see, if I if I let this book depart out of my mouth, that means I'm not paying attention. I'm not, I'm not reading it. I'm not, I'm not listening to what he's saying. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt what? Meditate. 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 One and eight. Chapter one, verse eight. Joshua, chapter one, verse eight. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Amen. See, if I meditate in the word day and night, what that's going to do? That's going to that's going to cause that's going to that's going to begin to it's going to go beyond my my carnal thinking. It's going to go beyond my carnal thinking. It's going to begin to it's going to begin to filter down into my heart. And once it begins to filter down into my heart, it's going to begin to it's going to begin to to break the powers of darkness. That has been that has been interfering with the will of God for my life because now I'm being transformed from dark to light. That's why he said in Isaiah and Proverbs chapter Proverbs chapter four verse twenty, he said, "My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear to my saying." Because if I don't attend to His words, that means I'm not paying attention to what God is saying. I'm still trying to do things my way. But God wants me to pay attention to what he's saying. Because if I pay attention to what he's saying, then that's a, then it's possibly, it's very much possible that I can be free from the iniquity and from the sin that is down through my generation. But if I continue to, 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 to not to disregard his word, if I continue to disregard what he's saying, then that iniquity, that sin is going to run rampant, not only in my life, but in the bloodline of my siblings. then they're going to have to deal with that same issues that mama and daddy has been dealing with. 
Because mom and daddy didn't do nothing about it. And because they didn't do nothing about it, the church won't be like mama. The church won't be like daddy. And the spirit that they operate in is going to go down upon them. Why? Because they won't be like them. And this is the whole thing that God is trying to bring to our attention. If we want to be free, then we have to renounce the sin of our father, the sin of our father's father, the sin of our father's father, father, and the sin of our father's father's father, father. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because if we do that, then we're going to experience freedom. We're going to experience deliverance. We're going to experience the peace of God. There's a passive all understanding. It will begin to rest upon our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Oh my God. And we will begin to we begin to, to see the love of God and the and the presence of God. Oh my God. And, and, and let me tell you something. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Can I take it over to the book of, of Matthew real quick? In the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew. Now look at verse number one. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ. Listen to what it said. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. The son of David. The son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the, his brethren. And Judah began, and Judah, Judah begat Pharaoh, and Zerah of Tamar, and Zerah begat Ephraim, and Ephraim begat Aram, and Aram begat Abinadad, and Abinadad begat Nasim, and Nasim begat Solomon, and Solomon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat with Boaz of Ruth, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. And Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David, the king of... And David, the king, begat Solomon, of her that had been the wife of Urah. Urah. What was his name? <laughs> Amen. And Solomon begat Robam, and Reuben begat Aab, and Aram begat Azar, and Azar begat Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozar, and Ozar begat Jonathan, and Jonathan begat Ahaz, and Ahaz begat Ezekiel. And then, it, and, 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 now, now notice, notice this. He's talking about generations here. He's not talking about just one person. He's talking about generations. Now notice what it goes on to say, verse number 17. Verse number 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are what? 14 generations. In verse number 17. 14 generations. And, amen. And from David unto the carried away into Babylon are how many generations? 14 generations. Amen. Verse, uh, chapter 1, verse number 17. Chapter 1, verse number 17. Amen. 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 And, and Babylon unto, unto Christ a 14 generation. Now notice these generations they all went through situations in their lives. Every generation had their own problems that they had to deal with. They had their own sin, their own iniquity, their own problems when it comes to serving God. God had to send his son Jesus to bring the correction into the bloodline of man. He 
demonstrated the kingdom of God through his lifestyle. And when we when we when we saw we, we saw miracles, we saw signs, we saw wonders. Why? Because of the power that he was walking in. Now he said to us, he said, the works that I do shall you do also, and great works these shall you do, because I go to my father. But the but then he said it right here. Then he said it right here. But you must be born again. You must repent. You must acknowledge that I am the Son of God. You must acknowledge that I have demonstrated to you the power of heaven. You must acknowledge to you, you must acknowledge that I am the, the, the I am come to uh, satisfy the, the promise that God gave to our father, Abraham. Amen. I have come to fulfill that which he began in the Garden of Eden. The curse that came down upon mankind was because of, of rebellion against the Father. I came in obedience to restore the spirit of rebellion to break it off of you so that you can have a access to the throne room of God through my life. <clears throat> Y'all understand what I'm saying? So Jesus did what? Jesus took your iniquity, your trespasses, your sin, and mine. And he took all that we have lived in because of Adam, and he became Adam. He took your sin and my sin, and he gave us his righteousness. My God. Mm. There's so much more I want to talk about, but I can't right now. I can't right now because it's time to do communion. Y'all understand what I'm saying, though, right? Now, I'm going to pick back up on this on next Sunday morning. So, because God said, I hadn't preached it enough. I hadn't broke it down enough. I hadn't helped you to understand enough of it. You can come, Brother Eric. Amen. And what we need, what, what God is doing, he's, 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 he's given us, he's given us the tools that we can make a firm decision on our life. make a firm decision in our heart which way we want to go. You see, God is not willing that any should perish. That's why he, that's why he's still dealing with the sin. Because he's not willing that any should perish. See, this is why, this is, see, generational curses have come down and it brought certain uh, defects in our lives. And it and and, 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 it's, and it's pronounced on us as curses. But God, but God wants to deliver us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, what is written, curses everyone that hangeth on a tree. Every curse that the world or that the devil, that the kingdom of darkness tried to bring on you because of your bloodline, Christ wants to deliver you from it. This is why he said they had not got the sin, they don't understand what you're preaching. Keep preaching it because they had not come to understand the significance of the message yet. He not only want to set you free. He want to set your brothers free. He want to set your sisters free. He want to set your mama free. He want to set your dad free. He want to set your children free. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I believe that God is talking to us today. I believe that God is dealing with, he, he, He's going to the root cause. See, we, we, we've been looking at it from the surface. We've been looking at it from the outward standpoint. God is going deep. He's going deep, and He's going deep where? Into the depth of our soul. And he's, and he's, and he's, you ever had a big sore on your body, then you, you start picking at the scale, and it start hurting a little bit, but you, you pull it on, you jerk that scale bone off of that sore, then uh, it's going to hurt for a minute, but after a while, it's going to start, it's going to, it's going to, the pain will be gone. Then the next time you look at that sore, it's going to have a new coat over it. Amen. And all of a sudden, you're going to see it's starting to turn back to the normal color of the skin. What happened? He uncovered that what needs to be uncovered so that he can bring back to rest and restore that what it should be. God can restore your heart to what it should be. He's exposing the enemy that have held you in bondage all this time. He's pulling back the scab. He's pulling back the scab because he read the brain. He read the re He's about to re begin full restoration. Restore. Restoration is coming. Restoration is coming to you. Restoration is coming. Restoration is coming. Restoration is coming. Ooh, glory to God. Restoration is coming. Father, I know that this is not the end of this message. I see, Lord, that you want to do something in the heart of men, not just on the surface. You want to go deep. You want to pull the scalp and you want to begin to do a fresh work. And so, Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to give us the patience and then give us the ability to endure so that we will not fall behind in any good thing that you've begun in us. Help us to see ourselves, Father, break it free breaking free from the iniquities from the curse of iniquities from the generational curse of iniquities that have held us in bondage and let us begin to experience restoration restore us Lord God restore our hearts restore our minds restore our health restore everything that the enemy has stolen from us in the name of Jesus, I ask. And God, I give you all the praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Get ready for communion now. Are y'all glad you come today? Yeah. The Lord just impressed upon my heart. When we sincerely truly repent oh my god the things that have 
tried to destroy you, the things that have brought you into bondage, these things will begin to, oh, I just saw a mountain. And I saw, I see rain falling real strongly on this mountain. And I see the, the loose trash that's on this mountain has been washed off because of the rain is falling so strong and the loose stuff is just floating on down. This is what God is saying about you. Because of your true, sincere heart of repentance, I will cause it to rain upon you. And those things that have attached to your body, those things that have held you in bondage, those things that look like you're trying to take your life, those things that is trying to destroy you, God said, I will begin to wash them. I begin to break them. I begin to loose them from you. Woo! My God! Did y'all get that? God is speaking this morning. God is speaking this morning. It's time for us to, to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And when we hear, we need to honor what He's saying. We need to honor what He's saying. We need to hear and honor what He says. From the pulpit to the pew. From the pulpit to the pew. See, if the leader don't get it right, then the people won't get it right. Because as the spirit rests upon a leader, it's going to come forth and bring about in the pulpit, in the pew, the same spirit that he's operating in going to rest upon them. That's why God said they have not understood the significance of it yet. Keep preaching it. It's not, God said it has to get into the atmosphere. It has to get into the atmosphere. It has to get into the atmosphere because as it gets into the atmosphere, the people that I have ordained for this message to rest upon their ears will hear and as they hear, they will begin to acknowledge. And as they begin to acknowledge, I will begin the work that I intend to do for such a for, for some time now. See, God wants to do a work, but God has been held back because the people are not allowing God to work. Hallelujah. They're not allowing them to work. I'm trying to stop. God has given us an opportunity to be first because we have, we've always been last. Now it's time for the last to become first. Yes. <laughs> they looked upon us. They talked about us. They put their mouth on us. They closed down their churches during the pandemic. We didn't close the house down. <laughs> Even though they talked about it, they put their mouth on us. They even come against us, try to make us shut it down, but we we stayed open. Why? Because we wasn't looking to the arm of the flesh. We don't serve man, we serve God. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Ah, woo! Verse number 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. But when he had given thanks, he break and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying this cup is the new testament in my blood 
This do you and often that you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Verse number 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Verse 28, we all get to take part in it. He said, but let the man or woman do what? Examine himself or herself. He's talking to us. Men and women alike, he's talking to us. But let them examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily do what? Eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly, and among many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. That word sleep means die prematurely. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. Amen. See, if God loved you, just like you love your children when they were growing up, you chastise them. And that's what God said about us. That's what he said about us. Are y'all getting that? Verse number, verse number, verse number 31. For if we would judge ourselves, then we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. See, this is what God is working on right now, that we not be condemned with the world because judgment, judgment is coming. Judgment is coming to those that will not sincerely repent. Judgment is coming. Go ahead and pass out the ornaments. We all going to eat and drink together. No one eat or drink until we all eat and drink together. Verse number 33 said, Wherefore, brethren, when we eat, wherefore, when we come together to eat, let every man with a tarry one whenever when, wherefore, brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that he can, that he come not together unto condemnation. And the rest what I said in order when I come. He's getting ready to set things in order for me because he's getting ready to come. Now, this is whole. When Jesus went to, to Pilate's courtyard, he was whole. There was nothing broken about his body. But when they cried out, crucify him, crucify him, he said, why crucify him? What, what evil has he done? He couldn't find no wrong in him. He wanted to let him go. But the people prevailed and they said, crucify him. Well, he made himself a king. And they prevailed. Instead of him letting him go, he sent him to be scourged. 
He took 39 stripes upon his back. And those stripes represent the diseases that are in the world today. When we partake of his broken body, we partake of the healing that he released through those stripes that went across his back. It's so important that we understand that because you see, life is in the body that was broken for you. He was wounded, the Bible said, for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Not going to be healed. Not might be healed. You need to start seeing yourself healed. Father, I take this and I sanctify this now. And I ask you, Father, let it be transformed from its common use for his spiritual purpose. Lord, you was wounded for our transgressions. You said it. You said that you were bruised for our iniquities. You said by your stripes we are healed. You said it, Lord. Now, Father, your word cannot lie. And you said by your stripes we are healed. And as we partake of this, Father, we are partaking of what you've already made available to us. We are partaking of your healing that you have provided for us. We receive it by faith now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that every infirmity, every curse against our bodies has been broken right now in the spirit. And that we are being healed inside out. Inside out. Starting now. Let us break. And let us eat together. We receive our healing now, Father. We receive healing now. From the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Every organ of our body, Lord God. Every tissue of our body. Every nerve of our body. Every muscle of our body. In the name of Jesus, I speak life. I speak life. I speak life, health, and healing over our bodies. Life, health, and healing over our bodies now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We receive. We receive. We receive. Shout out of us. Shout out of our God. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. This cup represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As he hung up on the cross of dying, all he had on his heart, all he had on his mind was you and me. He wanted to see us free from every dark spirit that was invading the earth. See, he saw him cast down as lightning because he wanted to be like God. He cast him down to the earth and he gave us power over all the powers of the enemy. As he hung upon that cross and he was dying, he said, Father, it is finished. And as he said it was finished, he laid his head in the lock of his shoulder. Darkness covered the earth because at this moment, he took your sin and my sin upon his own body. When he did that, God couldn't look upon him 
God turned his head. Why? Because he took it. He, he couldn't look on sin. That's why darkness covered the earth. And, again, and Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And as the darkness covered the earth, the veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. Friend, Jesus paid the price. The centurion came, the soldier came and pierced him in the side. And out came from his body blood and water. The blood was for what? To redeem man from his sin. Send him in right relationship with the Father. That's why he said that if we acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior who have died for our sin, we take upon his righteousness as he take our sin, we take his righteousness and we can continue in the presence of the Lord through his sacrifice that he made for you and me. Father, I thank you for the sacrifice of your son. I thank you for the blood that he shed. I thank you, Lord God, that you used that to bring us into right relationship with you. Because you wish that none should perish. Through his blood, you washed us clean from our sin. And we believe, Father, that today that we are reunited with you through the blood of your son, Jesus. Now, Father, I pray over this and I sanctify this. Let it be transformed now from its common use and let it be as the purpose that you ordained it, the blood of your son Jesus. Let us drink together. Thank you, Thank you Father. Bible said to give 
and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall be given to your book. I want to remind you all that on October we plan on going back to the mission field to Pakistan. And uh, we still have, we're still working on the budget. And those that can sow the seed for the budget, you don't, I'm talking to you about the internet. Those that can sow a seed toward this budget, we ask you to allow God to use you to be a part of this harvest that God is sending us to to reap in the harvest field, on the mission field. And whatever God put on your heart to sow, just sow that. I'm not going to put a amount on your heart. I'm not going to ask you for any certain amount. I'm just asking that God would touch your heart and that you will help us to meet the budget so that we won't be hurting financially during this mission work that God has placed on our heart to accomplish. And as you do your part, I believe that God will do his part. Amen. We believe in God for 150,000 souls to be touched by the power of God. Over 150,000 souls to be touched by the power of God. Not, not just by His presence, but by the power, because the power, it delivers. The power heals. The power set the captives free. And whatever the Lord tell you to do, just do it. You can go to my website, labrickministries.com. Amen. You can sow your seed there, or you can use your, uh, you, not YouTube, uh, Zelle. Zelle. You can use Zelle, just Vimbo, amen. If you want to use Zelle, you can just type Larry Bergen email, my email, use that. You can do that that way also. Website. If you use the website, that'd be better. If you use Vimbo, that'd be great. If you use Cash App, that'd be great also, amen. But God want you to use even PayPal. You can use PayPal. That would be great. God wants you to sow a seed because God has a harvest on his heart. And he said, the harvest is truly great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into his harvest. I'm one of the labors that he sent into his harvest. But you know, to go is one thing, but to do what we need to do when we get there is another thing. I need your help to do what I need to do when I get there. Because there's the equipment we have, to, the, the, the sound system, the, the, the field, we have to rent the field, the sound system, the stage, the lighting, and everything. It's a lot goes into this. Then security. Y'all want me to come back, right? So I need security. <laughs> Amen. So y'all do your best. Sow the best you can sow. Amen. And if it's because everything that's been coming in, if it's not tied, I'm putting it into the mission work. If it ties, it's going to the it's going to the ministry. But everything above ties is going to the mission work. Amen. And so I'm asking you to do your best to sow a significant seed that God can sow back into your life. Good measure, press down, shake together, and run it over. Your man get back into your bosom. God wants his covenant to be established and to continue to stay in strength in the earth, as he said in Deuteronomy 8.18. He wants that covenant to be continually strong in your life. So let's see, and let's see God meet your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I don't know what your needs are, but I know I serve a God that is able to meet those needs. We love you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And as you touch the hearts of your people, Lord God, I ask you, Lord God, that you would supernaturally bring them to the place, Father, 
where they can hear from heaven. Father, we have one more month before we have to start putting everything into motion. We need to meet this budget within another month, Lord God. We need to meet this budget. And so, Father, I'm asking that you begin to touch the heart of the people so that we can start making arrangements to do what needs to be done. And I know, God, that as we do, that you're going to show yourself strong on the behalf of those that support this work. I bless your people, and I thank you for them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, last time I asked certain people to sow a certain amount of seed, and everyone I asked did. I'm trying not to ask them. Amen. But if I have to go back and ask them again, I have to do what I have to do. Amen. I'm trying not to ask a certain people. I'm trying to ask God. I'm asking God that he would touch the heart of the people. Instead of me asking them personally. I want God to touch their heart so that they will they will do it without. But I know he said, asking it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking shall go. I know that's scripture. But if God speak to your heart, you might do above what I ask. <laughs> if God speak to your heart, you might do above what I ask. Because see what I'm because I have a bigger budget than I had before. Because now we're going as Larry Bergen Ministries. Before we was going, we was in training. We was learning how to do what we're about to do now. Now when we go to the field, we're going as Larry Bergen's ministries. We're not going as someone else's ministry. That's the And some of them that you want to go with. Yeah, and if you want to go with me, you're welcome to go. But you gotta pay your own way. You gotta pay your own hotel room. Amen. But you can go. And I would love to have you to go. Matter of fact, I'm talking to some people right now trying to get them to go. <laughs> I even act. <laughs> I'm <a> crabby, man. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you want to go? <laughs> Amen. But I'm asking people that if they want to go, they can't go. You just have to get ready. Because we got because the end of the, the end of this month, we gotta start getting things together. We gotta start getting the, the visa. We gotta start getting the airplane arrangement and the hotel arrangement. Everything starts end of this month. We need to start getting everything settled in this month. The end of this month. So everybody that wanna be a part, you have to let me know. If you can't be a part, I tell you what, you'll see what help me to do what I need to do. If I have to go by myself, I will. I don't, I don't, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Because I know God will go with me. When I first started going to the nations, I went by myself. I was going to India. I was going by myself. Africa, I went by myself. Amen. But when I went with Indonesia, I went with a team. Yes. When I went to uh, Pakistan the first two times, I went with a team. Yes. But now it's Larbergen Ministries that's going. And I will, if I have to, I'll go by myself again. I'd rather have a team. I'd rather have some people with me that can pray. Right. Right. Amen. So the Lord did with your heart, Eric. <laughs> oh, Dale. Oh, Dale. Oh, oh, Martin. Oh, Murphy. Oh. <laughs> Alex. Think about it. <laughs> Pray about it. Hey, Amen. Let's go ahead and sow a seed. Everybody sow the seed that wanted to sow the seed. Father, we thank you for the seed that was sold today. Those that are sold in house and those that are sold by the internet, television, or radio. God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will supernaturally open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon them that they will not have room enough to receive. 
Father, let the spirit of poverty, lack, insufficiency be broken off of their lives and off of their finances. Father, I have seen how you have ministered to people in the area of their finances as they support this ministry, Lord God. I see people that have become wealthy by supporting this ministry. Father, they have become so wealthy that they didn't, they, they went the other way because they feel like they, can, they need us no more. But God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, the Lord, you raise up millionaires among us. Raise them up, Lord God. Bring in the supernatural finances. Bring in the areas in life, Father, that will cause them to become millionaires. Open up their minds, Lord God, that they will see, know, and understand the hope of your calling. And what is their sealings of your power toward us who believe according to the workings of your mighty power. God, you said that we are wealthy. You said you can't, we may have life and that more abundantly. So, Father, I release the spirit of millionaires in this place. I release the spirit of millionaires in this place. I call the money in from the north, south, east, and west in the name of Jesus. And I declare they have more than enough. There's no lack represented in this place. Only, Father, that you show yourself strong on their behalf as they give. Give back to them as you said in your word. And I thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. If you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life right now, I'm going to give you that opportunity. I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. Oh, my Lord, 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 my Lord. My Lord. My Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God just spoke to someone's heart. You with me by the internet. God has spoke to someone's heart. And he asked you to sow a $10,000 seed. I just got that in my spirit. God has spoken to someone's heart that is listening. And he has asked you to sow a $10,000 seed. And I want to encourage you because I've done it myself. Amen. Several times. And now he's asking you to do it. And your obedience is going to cause that spirit of lack, that spirit of poverty to be broken off your life forever. Forever. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not broke no more. Why? Because I started obeying God. I remember when I was in the service and I see people give a hundred dollars. I said, God, I wish I could give a hundred dollars. And now I was able to give a hundred dollars. And I was in the service, I saw them giving five thousand dollars. I said, God, I wish I could give five thousand dollars. And I and I now I can give five thousand dollars. Matter of fact, I did it last week. And, then, and I said, God, I said, God, I wish I saw somebody giving ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars. God, I said, I wish I could give ten thousand dollars. I wish I could give twenty thousand dollars. You know what? I can do that now. Without hurting myself. Why? Because I learned the power of seed time and harvest. Yes. When you become the, the servant of your money, instead of your money become your servant, you will have no problem with finances. But as long as money is your servant and you not being his servant, you're going to have a problem with finances, even if you have it. Money is not your servant. You are the servant. Money serves you. You're not to serve money. Money serves you. Mm. Thank you, Lord. It took me a while to learn that. But I learned it. I learned it. <laughs> Amen. Even today. God is still letting us know if we're going to succeed, we have to continue to be givers. Continue to be givers. And that's why we do what we do. We are givers. Amen. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that person that you did with your heart about that $10,000, Father, Father, I pray that that person honor you because I see, God, you want to 
do something very powerful and significant in the area of that person's finances. And I thank you, Lord, for bringing it to my attention. In Jesus' name, amen. If you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, right now I'm going to give you an opportunity. God loves you. He wants to see you delivered. He wants to see you free. He wants to see you serving him with your whole heart. But there must be a repentance first. You must acknowledge him first. How do you acknowledge him? By remembering what he did for you on Calvary. He took your sin. He gave you his righteousness. He took your pain. He gave you his divine health. He took your separation from God and he took and he gave you his he gave you his presence with God. Now you can stand in the presence of God because of what he has done. If that's you and you want to get your heart right with God, you want to be able to stand in the presence of God, you want your sins to be forgiven, you want God to begin to do a work in your life and in your heart and in your body. And say this prayer with me. Say it from your heart. Because God loves you and He wants you to, to be saved. Say it for me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. Forgive me. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Create in me. Create in me. A right spirit. A right spirit. And renew in me. And renew in me. A clean heart. A clean heart. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And that you died for my sin. And you died for my sin. And because you died for my sin. And because you died for my sin. Today. Today. I'm able. I am able. To stand. To stand. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. As a man or woman. As a man or woman. Without sin. Without sin. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For saving me. For saving me. Amen. If you said that prayer right now, you are able, not just able, but you are in the presence of the Lord right now because of that prayer that you just prayed. Father, I pray for those that said that prayer, that those that said it from the bottom of their heart and meant it, Lord God, God, let the spirit of transformation begin now, now in Jesus' name. Let the sin and the iniquity that they have been operating in be broken off their lives. Let it be severed from their hearts now in Jesus' name. And let the peace of God that's a pass of all understanding begin to rest upon them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I declare and decree today is the day of their new beginning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Those of you that said that prayer, I pray that God is moving right now in your life. If you want right now, if you need prayer, I'll pray for you right now. Anyone need special prayer, I'll pray for you right now. spot every blemish to have touched her body to die now leave her now in the name of Jesus and you will not touch anyone in this room today tomorrow or the next day leave this place and leave this building now in Jesus name Open the door for a second. There you go. There you go. You can close it. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, today.
today is a day of new beginnings. Fresh, fresh, fresh presence. Fire, fire, fire. In Jesus' name. There it is, receive it, receive it, receive it. Father, we pray for those that are with us by the internet right now. We break every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease off of them as well. We loose it from their assignment, and we release divine health and healing from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. We declare and decree fire. Fire. Fire over their bodies, over their lives. In Jesus' name, be healed. God, I thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Did everybody get anything out of this today? Yeah. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Father, for all that you've done. Thank you, Father, for this service. And as we prepare to leave this place, let us return tonight, Father, with great expectation. In great expectation, believing that we will receive the manifestation of your strength and your promise in our lives. We thank you. And we say that it is done in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you tonight at 630. God bless you. Oh